one more thing I want to talk about in this video is dividing polynomials. There's two ways to divide polynomials. One is really easy and one is a little bit more work. Both of them are useful though. The first way is called synthetic division and then the second way is called long division. So I want to show you how to do the synthetic division first and then we'll do long division second. Okay, synthetic division. In synthetic division, what we're going to do first is the polynomial at the top, I'm only going to take the coefficient of each term in my numerator and I'm going to put it inside the house. So the x squared plus x minus 12, if I take the coefficient of each term, that's going to be 1, 1, and then negative 12. And I put that inside my uh, long division symbol. Now the solution for my denominator is going to be 4. If I set the denominator equal to 4, I end up getting, um, if I set the denominator equal to 0, oh, I'm sorry, if I set the denominator equal to 0, I end up getting 4 as my solution. So I put that outside of the house. Once you have your problem set up, you want to start your synthetic division by bringing down the first number, and that first number is 1. Then I multiply 1 times the solution on the outside, 4. And 1 times 4 is going to be 4. I put that 4 right underneath the second column and then I'm going to bring the two numbers together. 1 plus 4 and I get 5. And I start this process over again. I take the 5 and I multiply it by the solution on the outside which is 4. So 5 times 4 is going to be 20 and then I put it in the next column. I bring the two numbers together and I end up getting positive 8. Now that positive 8 is your remainder. So how do I write my solution? The way I write the solution is the numbers that I got, the 1, 5, and 8. These are coefficients of the new polynomial that I'm about to write. This new polynomial is going to be 1 degree less than the polynomial that I have in my numerator. The x squared plus x minus 12 that's a second degree polynomial, so I'm going to go down and make my solution a one degree polynomial. So the first term is one, so the coefficient of the first term is going to be one, so I put x plus five, and then the remainder eight, I put it over my denominator x minus four, and this is my solution. Now let's do this again with a new rational expression, 8x squared minus x plus 4 over x plus 2. So the coefficients of my numerator, I'm going to put those inside of my long division. 8, negative 1, positive 4. And this goes inside the house, quote unquote. The solution for my denominator is going to be negative 2. And so to start out synthetic division, you always bring down the first number 8. Then I multiply 8 times negative 2. I get negative 16. I combine negative 1 minus 16. That gives me negative 17. Then I start over. I multiply negative 17 times negative 2. That's going to give me positive 34. Then I bring these two numbers together to get 38. 38 is my remainder. So to write my solution is 8x minus 17 plus 38 over x plus 2. Now let's try this one more time. Let's do a rational expression that has gaps. Let's do 4x to the third plus x minus 1 over x plus 1. 
Now, in the numerator, I have gaps. And what I mean by gaps is that you see how it goes from x to the third and then it goes down to x? There's no x squared in there. There's no term to show x squared. So if you ever have gaps, you want to fill those in with zeros. So notice here I have the coefficients at the top for 1, negative 1. But I'm going to put a 0 in place of the x squared because I don't have an x squared in the original polynomial. This is called filling in the gaps. The solution is going to be, uh, from the denominator, is going to be negative 1. So I'll start my synthetic division. Bring down the 4, multiply 4, negative 1. Then I bring the negative 4 plus 0, and I get negative 4. Multiply, get positive 4. Add, and then I end up getting a remainder of negative 6. So my solution is going to be one degree smaller than my numerator. So this is going to be 4x squared minus 4 plus 5 plus, and then my remainder is negative 6 over x plus 1. But I could rewrite this 4x squared minus 4x plus 5 and just do minus 6 over x plus 1. Same thing. Okay, long division. So long division of polynomials or a rational expression, the way I would start is I would put the polynomial that's at the top, the whole polynomial, I would put that inside of the long division uh, symbol. And then the polynomial that's in the denominator, I put that on the outside. Long division is great if you can't find the solution for the denominator, so it's really good to know how to do both of these. But the first thing that you want to do, once you have it set up the correct way, is you always look at the first term. First term. So the first term on the outside of the house is an x. The first term on the inside of the house is an x squared. And you're asking yourself, what do I have to multiply the outside term by? in order to get the first term of the inside polynomial. So x, and I'm trying to get x squared, what I have to multiply it by is x. So I put it on top of the house, on top of its like term. So if you notice, I put x on top of the x in the polynomial. And then after I do that, I want to multiply x times x minus 4. If I multiply x times x minus 4, it's almost like I'm distributing, and I get x squared minus 4x. It's almost like I'm doing a little distributive property, and I'm putting that value right underneath their like terms. Next step is to switch the signs. You're getting ready to subtract, but you're subtracting a whole polynomial. So in order to subtract the polynomial, it's almost like you're multiplying each term by negative 1. You're changing the signs of everything. So the first term becomes negative, and then the second one becomes positive. And then I bring them together. Switch the signs is what we're doing right here. And the reason why we're switching the signs is because that's going to make the first two terms go away. And then when I bring x plus 4x, I get 5x. Next, I bring down the negative 12 and I start the process over again. I'm looking at the first term on the outside and the first term of the new polynomial below. And I'm trying to figure out what do I have to multiply the outside by in order to get the first term that's in my new polynomial. I have to multiply x by 5 in order to get 5x. So I put the 5 above the polynomial, above this like term, and I get 5x minus 20. Now I need to change the signs. I'm switching the signs again. It's like I'm multiplying everything by negative 1. 
So negative and this becomes positive. The first terms, they cancel out and I end up getting eight as my remainder. A remainder of eight. So how do I write my solution? It's going to be X plus five plus my remainder of eight over X minus four. The denominator always stays the same. Let's do this again. So let's try another polynomial. How about eight X squared? plus 26x plus 15 over 4x plus 1. So the polynomial at the top, 8x squared plus 26x plus 15 goes inside the house and then the 4x plus 1 goes on the outside of the house. Always look at the first term. First term on the outside, first term on the inside. What do I have to multiply 4x by in order to get 8x squared? And that's going to be 2x. I put the 2x on top of this like term and then I need to multiply. I need to multiply 2x times 4x plus 1. And that's going to give me 8x squared. plus 2x. Now I switch my signs. I multiply everything by negative 1. So if this turns into a negative, this turns into a negative. First terms cancel out and I get 24x. Now I bring down the 15 and I start the process over. What do I have to multiply 4x by in order to get 24x? And that is positive 6. Now I multiply 6 times 4x plus 1 and I get 24x plus 6. I'm going to switch my signs and then I bring them together. I end up getting 9. So my solution is going to be 2x plus 6. plus 9 over my denominator, which is 4x plus 1. Okay, one more example with long division. And again, I want to do a long division where I need to fill in gaps. So I have 2x to the fifth minus x to the third plus 2. There's a lot of gaps that need to be filled in because there's no x to the fourth. There's no x squared and there's no x. So I have to fill in those gaps with zeros. So with my long division, the polynomial at the top, I'm going to put inside the house. But I'm going to put zeros in place of the gaps that are missing. So I put 0x to the fourth. Notice I put 0x squared and then I put 0x. This is to fill in the gaps. The polynomial in the denominator are put on the outside. Now, if I take a look at the first term, x to the third, 2x to the fifth, I need to multiply that by 2x squared in order to get 2x to the fifth. And so I multiply. I get 2x to the fifth, and then I get minus 2x squared. And then I need to change the signs. So First one turns into a minus, and then the second one is going to turn into a plus. First term cancels, second term cancel. I can bring down the negative x to the third, and then 0 plus 2x squared is 2x squared. Next, I'm going to bring down the 0x. And since this is just 0, I'm going to go ahead and bring down the uh, 2 at, or the 2 as well. So I'm going to bring down the plus 2. And then I look at the first term. I have to multiply x to the third times negative 1 in order to get 
negative x to the third. And so I multiply and I put negative x to the third plus one. Next step is to change the signs. This turns into positive, this one turns into negative. I bring down 2x squared and 2 minus 1 is going to be positive 1. So my solution, 2x squared minus 1 plus my remainder was 2x squared plus 1 over my denominator x to the third minus 1. Man, Texans fans are real in the streets.